Everybody got problems, yeah, but we didn't know my way to solve them. Uh, I really came up from the bottom, struggling my mama on the last dollar. Hustling, man, I've been putting in these hours. The government been trying to take it where it's ours. Really all about the money and the power. I just want to see my people in power. Uh, uh, tell me how we gonna shape this vision. Complaining all day, but in the same condition. If you want to make change, it's gonna take commitment. Some people enslaved by day religion. Can't emancipate the fundamental principle. Listen, I've been on the mission ah! And I really can't take it no more I've been fighting temptations, my lord I'm hanging, I'm restless And I really can't help it I never felt selfish before I've been living so reckless, I know Tell me, look, can you help me? I said, look Everybody got fights, yeah, but wouldn't know what good advice was, uh, till they leave him like this, another mama crying, it's another crisis, Lord knows we're just trying to live righteous, are you willing just to make the sacrifices, I know we can't continue living like this, and I never sell my soul cause that's priceless, uh, uh, tell me how we gonna make a living, hustle on the block, who gonna save the children, man it's all a plot and I'm just revealing, the media just trying to make a villain, I just take the pain and paint a picture of voice. This is in my head, I hear the whispers when I feel this way. And I really can't take it no more. I've been fighting temptations, my lord. I'm young and I'm restless. And I really can't help it. I never felt selfish before. I've been living so reckless, I know. Tell me, Loki, you will be. I said, Loki, you will be.
No rings for the teens, I go miss them now. Promises and wishes. Why would I ever start celebrating? Why would I ever start celebrating? I'm naming all the hearts I've been breaking. I'm naming all the hearts I've been breaking. breaking, breaking. The showers on the way. I've been working 25 hours every day. Pull up with the bands, having dancing in the rain. Pull up with the bands, having dancing. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Today, we've got an exciting matchup on tap. It's the Colts coming in at 4-2, and two, going up against the Jaguars, who come in at 1-5. and five. Thank you, Larry. We welcome you to the heart of the Hoosier State in the circle city of Indianapolis, Indiana, at Lucas Oil Stadium. Just as we were ready for air, it was the Colts emerging from the locker room to great fanfare here at Indy. They're ready to go as the Colts get set to match up with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And he'll be knocked down sideways. First rider from LSU, it's Leonard Fournette. And he'll find some space up to about the 25. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. And Leonard Fournette impressing there with that run. It's hard to believe that no Jacksonville Jaguar has broken 1,000 yards since Maurice Jones drew in 2011. I think Leonard Fournette could be that guy. Even with the ankle injury last year at LSU, still averaged six and a half yards per carry. And absolutely intimidated opposing defenses. A lot of guys simply didn't want to tackle him. And he will lose yardage and be backed up to the 24. Down on the field, we've got an injured Colt after that last play. We'll check on his status when we get back. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. He'll set up a throw. This is caught by Robinson. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Fresh set of downs here. Let's go. Now Leonard Fournette. And he's got some space here. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. That one good for 33 and a first. But there's a reason he was the first running back taken. You saw the ability there, the ability to be physical and get downhill. And how about him breaking off a nice gain there? There's some Adrian Peterson comparisons out there now. That's high praise. Do you think that they're warranted? Running style, very similar. Play clock winding down. He'll look to throw. Caught out left side by Robinson. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. A very solid gain of 27. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Here we go now. Three, 19. Three, 19. They'll try to run with Ivory. And he will maneuver his way down to about the seven. It'll be a three-yard pickup, and it brings up second and goal. 
Well, if the coaching staff's doing a good job upstairs, they'll file away what they just saw from the defense right there. They sold out to stop that running play. I'd say keep that in mind. They want to try that again. Go play action and hit them over the top. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. Back to throw. And he's going to go down. Sacked back at the 13-yard line. Jabal Sheard. Coming in from that outside linebacker spot, he gets him down for a loss of five. Can this defense get the stop on the opening drive? Here's third and goal. Back to throw here. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Hassan Ridgeway in there to drop him for his fifth sack of the year. So on fourth down, on comes the Jaguars. Jason Myers now for the field goal try. They'll spot it at the 30, so this is a 40-yard attempt. And Myers able to knock it through. And the Jaguars grab a 3-0 lead. So they come into enemy territory. Nice drive to start the game, but they probably wanted six. They only got three. I agree with you totally. That's the expectation. When you get the ball and you start moving it and you're rolling, you think you're going to end up in the end zone. But they should be happy with the three. A good way to get things going here in this game. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. is incomplete. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. It came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. So the incomplete pass brings up second down. Michigan man, Darius Jackson on the carry. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. It'll be a loss of one, and that'll bring up a third and 11 situation. about to try and take your job I can't do what you do but that wasn't just three and out that felt like three and backwards that's exactly what it was uh, you can have my job whenever <laughs> you want it uh, the drive that you're looking for though probably going forward bad start to the ball game yeah not the way to get things going our first look at the NFL scoreboard comes from Green Bay early lead in that one for the Packers and we'll keep an eye on that one as our game goes along here Fielded at the 33. 
Eight yards on the return following a punt of 41. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. And out now comes Jacksonville as they get ready to go. And they're not going to play this conservative, I don't think. They had the field goal last time, and they're up, but they're looking to put a drive in the end zone. Oh, I agree with you totally. No one is, goes out on the field and says, all right, let's yeah. just settle for three, except in certain situations, trying to ice a game, that sort of deal. Most of the time, it's end zone, and that's what you're thinking, and I believe that's exactly what they're thinking as they begin this one. Yeah, no quarterback ever goes out there saying, let's get three, right? <laughs> not one that I've ever met. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. So second and ten here. Looking to throw. And complete to Lewis over the middle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. The Jags picking up the first down there, a gain of 12. So the offense has it first and 10. Now Fournette. And he's brought down. Ten more there and another first down. Getting the sense, Charles, they're going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. They keep it with Fournette on first down. And this carry not as productive. He's swallowed up at the line of scrimmage. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Kind of running there at your own risk against that 4-3 in that big line, aren't you? Yeah, and I don't really run it against a good 4-3 team that well because I've got to get those guys on the move a little bit. If you're a static running team, meaning you just want to run it in the middle, you may have some trouble against good defensive tackles. That's what we just saw on that play. No gain. So they're still at the original line of scrimmage here. Second down and 10. The play clock's running down. Now he'll look to throw here on second and 10. Throw left side complete. That's Robinson. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. First down, Jacksonville. The passing game looking sharp on this drive for the Jags. This is Ivory. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. That's a strong pickup right there on first down. And as this drive goes on, we're seeing an offensive line and running game imposing its will. Alongside the former defensive back Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Jaguar football as we begin quarter number two. They've got a second down at five here to start things out. In motion comes the tight end left. They keep it on the ground. This time it's Fournette. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. Call that a loss of five yards on the play. And that's going to make it third down and 10. throw. Nowhere to escape and he goes down. Al 
Robert Woods with a big time sack on third down. And it'll be a loss of seven. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. Made his first. This now from 42 yards out. And Myers able to knock it through. And that will make it six to nothing. So that scores now in their first two possessions, but it's six nothing. Probably not the kind of scores they were hoping for. No, not at all. But I think that they've shown that they can have some success against this defense. So they'll go back to the sideline knowing the points are going to be there for the taking. Myers now converted on the field goal try. Now he's on to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. A reminder later tonight, a game some folks have had circled on their calendar since the schedule came out in April. That's the Super Bowl rematch. Falcons, Charles, at Foxborough to take on the Patriots. Super Bowl 51 and a half, anyone? <laughs> then on Monday night, that's no slouch either. An NFC East battle between the Redskins and the Eagles. Now a play fake here on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. The positioning here is key. As a defensive back, you're taught 99% of the time make a play on the football. But in this case, making a play on the man was all the difference. That's what forced the incompletion. Unable to connect on the first down pass play. Now it's second down. The throw is Kaepernick, staying on his feet. But now he's swallowed up and taken down. The game plan for any defense is finding ways to make a quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket. When you bring pressure from all angles, you never know who's going to get home. In this case, the left cornerback, right in the face of him, puts him down. Here's third and long, Kaepernick needing a big play to counteract the sack. Working from the gun, it's Kaepernick. Over the middle, complete, it's Doyle. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. He got 29 yards that time. And he'll get this down only to about the 46. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. Well, he hasn't made much of an impact in the running game thus far, and after that last run, not much is going to change in that area. He hasn't been able to get anything going, and really the offensive line not helping him much. This is Marlon Mack. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. I think if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. They go play action here on first down. Looking deep downfield. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete. But the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. A little too aggressive defensively, and the flag comes out. And no one trying to cover is going to like a call going against them, but you have to like the effort there. Went for the interception, just unable to get it, and the flag did come out. Now 
it's Gore. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom, quick, 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 and what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. They'll run it with Jackson. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. To throw, Kaepernick. And he's got his target. It's caught for a close touchdown. T.Y. Hilton, his third touchdown now on the year. And the Colts have tied things up. They can take the lead with the extra point. And he'll bang that one through. Terry out there to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. Then he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line. Out comes the Jaguar offense now as they get set to take over. They've been settling quite a bit. They've been able to move the football some, but they've just been settling. That's one of the reasons they're down on the scoreboard. I love that word you picked, settling, because nowadays in, in this NFL, you're thinking touchdown almost every drive because everything's so high-powered. Yeah, you'll take the field goal, but you always feel like you're leaving points out there when you don't put it in the end zone. They'll be trying to put it in the end zone here on this drive. Trying to get it to Robinson, and it's intercepted. That's the rookie from Ohio State, Malik Hooker, with the INT. But look at that, Chuck. A rookie picked the rookie on that play. How about that? Is that rookie on rookie crime? <laughs> but you know what happens, too. If you're a rookie defender... You tend to adjust to the game a little bit quicker than if you're a quarterback. Too many things still going through his mind. And on that play, the rookie defender won the battle. Looking to jam the receivers at the line here. Press coverage, look defensively. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. It's a loss of five there, bringing up second. That goes down as a loss against his rushing stats. But really, should he have to absorb that one? He had no chance on that play before they overwhelmed him. Pretty much on top of him before he could take his first step. Come on, let's go! Now this time, Kaepernick will throw. Looking for Moncrief, and it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. He's got the lane, and there he goes. The 30, 10, and he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. So a pick six there out of the nickel package. They went with five DBs. Almost becoming the base package in the NFL is the nickel. Hard to throw against. That was demonstrated one more time. A pick six going the other way. And he puts this one through as the lead moves to 13-7. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And all that worked, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. And the Colts coming out now. And last time, decent field position through the pick six. Obviously costly. 
but they can't afford to just bunker in now. All right, they, good field position means go ahead and attack on offense. Try and press the advantage a little bit. They just have to be better with the football on this possession. So the last one, that didn't bother you too much last time? No, because it's, it's exactly what you're supposed to do. You can't have good field position and not try to take advantage of it. Sometimes the defense makes a good play, too. Now Kaepernick looking left sideline incomplete. T.Y. Hilton, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Play action. Now Kaepernick. Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he's finally taken down, but not before getting across midfield and across the 45-yard line. in the hands of their speedster Dorsett. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else he'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. And ready now for second and nine. Two minutes to go here in the first half. We'll come back to Indianapolis right after this. This is Jackson. And some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Back-to-back one-yard runs here, so that leaves him with a third down and eight. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Third and long, it's Kaepernick. Into double coverage, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Tashawn Gibson. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. That's sort of a second quarter to forget for him. Now two picks in this frame. Almost as if the first one that he threw, he couldn't shake, couldn't get it out of his head. He ends up throwing a second one as a result. Compounds the mistake a little bit. Yeah, you got to be able to forget, compartmentalize, whatever you want to call it, and move on. He hasn't been able to do so here in the second. All right, now, look at 56. Look at 56. Here we go now. Watch it now. Barney, Barney. Hurry up. Here we go. Back to the up, Here we go. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. I think he had to unload that one before he wanted to. He was right up in his grill. I think he was a dentist there without a license, don't you? <laughs> Just not enough time for the play to develop. Just lucky it wasn't a fumble, really. Back to throw now on second and ten. The Colts are going to get him. Down he goes. And another timeout taken by the Colts. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. The Jaguars on third down. Just one for three thus far. This will be third and 19. This is Fournette. And he'll get it up to the 12-yard line here. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout. 
And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Brad Nortman in his sixth year in the league on to punt it away. T.Y. Hilton deep for the Colts. And just a single punt for him in the loss last week as he sends this one away. Take it at the 37. A good kick, 48 yards, four on the return. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. Here comes the Colts offense now as they make their way onto the field. And two interceptions already here in this first half. That's got to affect him a little bit, right? He's got to be thinking about it. He's got to be thinking about it, but most of the good ones... They find a way to put it aside. They're not happy about it by any stretch of the imagination. They find a way to put it aside and continue to play their game. Can he put it aside? Let's find out. And he's got his man out of the backfield. That's complete. And he is out of bounds on the other side of midfield. A 14-yard gain for Indianapolis and also move the sticks. shy of the 35 at the 36. Give him nine there on the first down completion. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it because if you're going to lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong-arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. Caught left side by Hilton. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 20-yard line. A good pick up there of 20 yards. Into the red zone now, Kaepernick. Incomplete, and we're down to eight seconds now. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. From the left hash, this from 34. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And that will cut the lead back down to three at 13 to 10. So a field goal here, they're still down, but they put a dent into that lead before the break. And that's got to feel good, because now they've seen that they can put some more points on the board, and that gives them a whole second half to get back to where they want to be, and that's in the lead. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Here comes the Jaguars' offense as they get set to go again. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. The defensive line disperses a little bit here, maybe expecting a pass. They'll send the tight end in motion left. They'll start out on the ground. It's Leonard Fournette. And he's going to be taken down here as that will lead us to the end of the first half of play. So we've reached halftime here with the visiting Jaguars out on top as we'll send you down to Orlando where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry, both teams appear ready for the fight ahead and we resume action here in quarter number three. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Out come the Colts. They'll have it first here to start quarter number three. They're down here, but very much in this game. What, what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission? Typically, what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that. Sure, you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down. But overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half, and we've got the football. Let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. 
No, for some reason it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you call it a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. Well, this is caught by Williams. Williams loses the football, and the Jags grab it. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. Call it a loss of two on the play, and it'll be second and 12. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Over the middle, the connection to Hearns. And he'll get it inside the 40 to the 39. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. They'll try and run for it with Fournette, and he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. So it'll be first down here after the run. They'll look to throw. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. His fourth touchdown on the year. And the Jaguars had six to their lead. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Here's Myers now to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. So you can have an empty possession, punt the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it downfield and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. Throwing now is Kaepernick, and the Jags get to him as down he goes. Paul Puzlazny. Leading the surge there, he drops him for a loss of six. Second down. Caught on the right side by Dorsen. And they'll bring him down at the 27-yard line. It's a pickup of 12, and that'll set up a third down.
The Colts on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and five. Shotgun snap now for Kaepernick. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Well, we're into the second half now, and this is an offense that continues to struggle to sustain a drive. Looks like they're just totally out of sync, whether they're running the ball, passing the ball like we saw there. I don't know. The rhythm seems off. Here's Jeff Locke now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. Take it in at the 22. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Out comes the Jacksonville offense as they get set to take over here. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They'll run with Fournette. And he'll get this up to about the 38-yard line. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. And after the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. They're going to look to throw. Trying to get it to Robinson, and it's intercepted. It's the rookie out of Florida, Quincy Wilson. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. The rookie picked off the rookie. And guess what? They're pretty familiar with each other. It's not like when I was growing up and the dinosaurs were roaming the earth and you heard about a guy somewhere. Now they run into each other at camps, going through high school ball, recruiting, college games, all-star games, you name it. A lot more familiarity with each other. So after the INT, it's Kaepernick. And a flag comes in as that one falls incomplete. Well, let's see who this is on. Now, this home crowd, they're happy with that call. <laughs> I like the way you said happy there, right? The so-called good guys didn't get a call. They feel like it's been that way all afternoon. You feeling their pain? They finally got one. Yes, they did. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. This is Jackson, and he has met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Officially, no gain on the play, and it's second down. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. Carbon copy as he'll again be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. The Colts on third down, two for five to this point. This is third and ten. And some changes here as the D-line separates some. Kaepernick going to throw. Being chased out left. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. Decent gain on the scramble to six, but now it's fourth. Well, he was looking at a dime formation. Six defensive backs on the field. So he's looking for anyone, anyone to throw the football to. But he didn't have anyone open, so he took off and ran for it. But he came up just short, and that brings up fourth down. So after the pick, they can't capitalize for six, but they do get three. And I know in this situation, most of us wanted to focus on the offense. You know what side of the ball I played on. Let's give that defense a lot of credit. Taking it over in a sudden change situation and shutting them down. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll get it up across the 20 
to the 21-yard line. On the NFL scoreboard, third quarter now in Lambeau. And that went all Packers right now. They've scored again. Remember to keep an eye on the ticker, of course, at the bottom of your screen for updates on that game and others around the NFL. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Second and ten, he'll look to throw again. But he almost had it defensively. Could have been a game changer there in this second half. Instead, it's third down. The man's getting a little loose with the football there, right? Interception before, almost had one here. He's got to start taking better care of it. Yeah, really should have been back-to-back -back drives with interceptions. He's lucky there. Third down, he'll drop to throw. And that's complete to Lewis. And they're going to get this one all the way out across the 45. They give him 27 yards on the third down conversion. Time running out here on the play clock. They'll look to throw here. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking to get it to Alan Hearns that time. And that'll bring up second down. A little too much oomph. Too much mustard there on that pass. They really turned it loose, didn't they? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong. Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Second down following the incompletion. This is Ivory. And he's going to be brought down inside the 45 at the 43. Nine yards on the pickup there as he'll be left with third and one. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. They need just a yard here. It's third and one. Fournette. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. He needed a yard, that's what he got, and it's going to earn him a new set of downs. Yeah, Offense comes to the line now, first and ten. Back now here on EA Sports. It's Jaguar football here, and they'll look to extend their lead as we begin quarter number four. So here we go, first and ten now. to throw and he will find his big tight end over the middle and he'll get this one down near the 20 yard line and a nice gain of 21 yards Fournette a first down carry and he'll take this inside the 20 and down to the 18. A gain of three, second down. And in this situation with the lead fourth quarter, they're liking keeping the ball on the ground, I'm sure. That's just smart football, but you know the defense has to know it as well. They've got to stop them here. So now we're going to see that loading the box in a big way. Six, seven, eight, nine, whatever it's going to take. Puts a little bit more pressure on your big offensive line. Looking to throw. 
And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The storm windows get a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception, you come away with nothing. Especially tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. The Jaguars on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and seven. play now for Ivory. And they'll get him down right around the 16. Give him a couple on the run as it brings up the fourth down. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And Myers able to knock it through. And that will push the lead up to double digits now at 10. So that's a big one there. It's his third field goal of the game, and a two-score lead's got to feel pretty good right about now. And while they're not free and clear yet, you're right. Now this defense can go out knowing that it's going to take more than one big play to catch them. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Here comes the Indianapolis offense now as they get set to take over. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Now that's going to go as a loss of six, and it'll set him back for second down. Kaepernick. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And that is what you call a hit stick. Put down to the ground hard. Looked like the screen pass was taken away there, but what a nice job improvising, finding other options, and completing the pass anyway. The Colts on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. This is third and 11. Come on, let's go! They'll run it now out of the gun. He gets a good chunk of yards there, eight all told, but they're still looking at a fourth down. Okay, he didn't break that one all the way, but you got to know that he feels like he's right on the verge, and that's probably exactly what he's telling them in the huddle right now. Here's Jeff Locke now as he's on to punt for Indianapolis. And the kick's away as he angles this one for the sideline. And this will carry out of bounds. Where are they going to spot it now? At about the 18-yard line, it looks like. The Jags offense now gets set and heads back onto the field. And last time they were able to churn some clock. They got the field goal added onto their lead. But that was a drive that was so long, it should have ended in a touchdown. You know that's how they felt. And we'll both be headed to the airport after the game. But we probably should go to the post-game press conference because someone's going to ask the head coach about this drive. And he's going to profess that he was happy to get points. But and we know it? that's not true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, after this type of a drive, not getting a touchdown, a huge disappointment. Where Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage, they've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back at New Paltz, Mrs. Bythema Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. And they'll get nine there as that sets them up better for third down.
The offense on third down tonight, they're at 50%, four for eight. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Here's a give to Fournette. Brandon, when a defense just simply can't get off the field on third down, and we all know how important that down is for both sides of the ball, you often feel like you're just a step behind whatever they're doing offensively. And one of the differences in this game, no doubt, third down conversion, and that is going to be a story they'll talk about after this one. Now a first carry for their fullback. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Well, big man with ball met bigger man on the other side of the line. A really nice play for the defense. Under four to go now as the clock runs, and they come up on second down. Second down, here's Fournette. And an alley to run. There he goes, left side. Touchdown, Jaguars. A great effort there. His fifth touchdown now on the year. And the Jaguars add on to their lead. And that run massively increased his production in this game, and now he's over 100 yards. And break out your calculator, partner, because his yards per carry went up it's significantly, skyrocketed. right? Big-time jaunt all the way to the end zone. Here's Myers now to kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And he'll make it across the 20, as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Now the Colts offense gets ready to head back on the field. And with this deficit, you can't have too many more drives like the last drive where you had to punt it away. You know what I would tell my offense right here? The punter doesn't exist, guys. He doesn't even exist. He's not, He's not a team anymore. I just cut him, <laughs> all right? So you've got to go out and create some that's offense that's for that's us that's here that's and give us some points. No way on, does that guy go. get on the field in this run. Poor punter. Yeah, he, it, it wasn't his fault. But so, hey, listen, there's some guys, there's got to be casualties at times. We're trying to win a game. Fighting through, and he's got space. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And that'll bring up a second and just about a few inches here. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of their yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Indianapolis moving the chains there on a gain of 12. Now that looked like the Colin Kaepernick we got to know early in his career. Able to scramble and pick up a first down. We haven't seen as much of that in recent times. Yeah, you, you know he's got the size to do it out of high school. 6'5", 170, but now 230, and we see what he can do with that frame. And I heard people didn't want to step in as a, as a hitter against him because he's a pretty darn good pitcher in high school, too. 92-mile-per-hour fastball in high school. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. Time for a break. We're back to finish this one off after this. Kaepernick to throw on second down. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Barry 
church. And he is all the way up past the 25. Wow, between last week and this week, that's now eight interceptions. Five a week ago, now three here. Well, he is so lucky that one of the defense coordinators I played for, a man named Ken Donahue, is not there right now. Because he saw that happen during his coaching career. And he grabbed a quarterback in the midst of a streak like this and said, tell you what, son, why don't you throw it to the defensive guys and let's see if our receivers can intercept it. <laughs> well, he's got to figure something out because the current formula is not working. starter this is TJ Yeldon and he'll fight forward to about the 27 yard line credit him with a one yard gain there to make it second and nine for the Jags. Victory seemingly in hand. The Jaguars on third down. Five out of nine thus far. This is third and ten. Down to a knee one more time, and that should just about do it. National Football League, Charles, you never take that for granted no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So for the Jags, it may not be too late to salvage their season as the win moves them to 2-5 and five now on the year. And they'll be able to enjoy this one through the bye week before they get back at it again. Meanwhile, for Indianapolis, the loss drops them back to 4-3 and three so far. And they'll try to turn things around next week as they have a matchup in Cincinnati against the Bengals. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say so long, everybody.